Yes. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, welcome everyone to the second part of the synchronization introduction by Fad Colon. Fad Nolan, sorry. Yeah. So, Thank you. Okay. So, in the first part of the talk, uh, you saw a lot of upper bounds. You are so optimistic and proving upper bounds. So, let me pessimistic and prove some lower bounds in the second part, okay? Uh, so, just formalize the definition of lossy kernelization or alpha approximate kernelization or just recall it. Uh, so, when does a problem pi has a, an alpha approximate kernelization? If there is a polynomial time algorithm which reduces its size such that the reduced instance will have size bounded by some function of k. And whenever somebody comes with a solution to the reduced instance, suppose that is a C approximate solution, then you should be able to pull back a alpha C approximate solution of the original instance in polynomial time. Then you will have an alpha approximate kernel in your hand. Okay? So, and we can change the definition a little bit and get definition for alpha approximate compression where the reduced instance is an instance of different problem that's all okay for kernelization you want the reduced instance also the, an instance of the same problem but for compression you don't want okay now in this talk we largely uh, we are going only to, uh, only for lower bounds and most of the examples except one are from the paper uh, lossy kernelization and co-authors are Daniel Saket, M.S. Ramanjan. Okay. And so we want to rule out some uh, these kind of questions. For some problem, I want to rule out say five approximate kernel of polynomial size. How will I do? So ask ourselves the question of how do we rule out the uh, a polynomial kernel in the normal setting is via cross composition, right? We do cross composition and then say like uh, starting from some NP hard problem and then say that, okay, now I cannot get a polynomial kernel. And how do we rule out polynomial time, say five approximate, uh, five approximation algorithm? It's one of the method is like a gap creating reductions. A, a reduction where you create some gaps such that even if you get approximate solution, you cannot distinguish uh, uh, like promise version of the problem. And so what we do is we just combine these two together and merge these two together to get something called a gap creating cross composition. So it is a cross composition where we also created gap. So we will see some examples and it will be clear when I explain some examples. Okay. So, okay, just quick recap of what is cross composition in case somebody is new to it. So, we, okay, if you want to rule out polynomial kernel for a problem pi, then we do cross composition. So, what is cross composition? We start with a language L and take t instances of it and in polynomial time, when I say polynomial time, polynomial in the input instance. So, for this algorithm, the input instance is L in T instances of L and then output an instance of pi. This is a parameterized problem. And then we want these properties should hold if at least one of the input instance is a yes instance, then the output instance should be an S instance. If all of the input instances are no instances, then the output instance should be a no instance. And the important part of the bound is this case should be polynomial in log t plus max xi. So we, we should be able, able to compress the size of the uh, parameter we are trying to. And the, the main theorem says that, in this setting says that, oh, if L is an NP hard problem and we are able to cross compose L to pi, where pi is a parameterized problem, then pi does not have a polynomial kernel unless something bad happens, right? This is the normal method. And, and in fact, if you recall this definition, we can also use instead of polynomial time algorithm, 
a co-non-deterministic polynomial time algorithm, which is an algorithm, a non-deterministic algorithm, uh, and it can make non-deterministic guesses. And now what is the property we want to satisfy when it is a co-non-deterministic algorithm is the following. If at least one of the instances is a yes instance, then in all the uh, computation path of the non-deterministic algorithm, I should get y comma k is a yes instance. And if all of them are no instance, then in at least one of the computation path, I want this to be y comma k to be a no instance. So just we could, we could relax this polynomial time algorithm to a non-deterministic, which means that co-non-deterministic. If it is yes, preserve s in all the computation paths. If it is, if all of them no, in one of the computation path, it should be no, right? This is the normal definition of uh, kernel lower bounds. We could use this kind of relaxed version as well, okay? Now, one of the simplest example we saw, the first example we see uh, for proving kernel lower bound is like k path. So, how does the uh, cross composition for k path work? Like, you just start with the Hamiltonian path problem. So, where the whether the graph has a path on n vertices where n is the total number of vertices in the graph. I can always assume that all the instances have same number of vertices. I'm not going too much into those details, but I can assume that. All the input instances have same number of vertices, same number of edges, these things I can assume. Okay? Now you just take disjoint union and set k to be n. Now it satisfies all the properties and we get k path does not have polynomial kernel. Right? Now, this is the way we do for uh, uh, how to roll out standard kernels. Now, we want to uh, move to the definition of what is this alpha gap cross composition. Alpha gap cross composition is pretty much similar to the definition of cross composition, but there is a little bit difference. Okay, and the difference is as follows. You start with, let L be a language, which is a decision problem, and pi be a parameterized maximization problem. Okay, now, an alpha gap cross composition is a polynomial time algorithm. It can be non deterministic, forget about that part now. It is a polynomial time algorithm, and it outputs an instance of our parameterized maximization problem, uh, pi. Along with this instance, it should output two numbers. One is large and one is small. Okay? And the property is small times alpha should be less than large. So this alpha is the gap here. And the property we want is if at least one of the instance in the input instance is a yes instance, then the opt should be large. Okay? Opt of yk should be large. And if all the instances are no instances, then op should be small, like it should be less than this integer, uh, this number small. Okay? So that is equivalent to the no instance in some sense. So even if you are able to come up with you know, an alpha approximate solution, this solution will be smaller than this large value. It won't be more than this large value. So you, you uh, th that's why we just need this condition. We just need to create a gap. All the instances we output either will have large optimum value or it should have small optimum value and there is a gap between them. And the gap is at least alpha times, alpha factor gap. And as usual, we want k to be bounded by t plus uh, log t plus max of xi. And then we can prove the same theorem, same, st same kind of theorem. Suppose L is NP hard and L alpha gap cross composition to pi, where alpha is a constant, then pi has no alpha approximate kernel or even compression of polynomial size, unless this bad thing happens. Okay? Now let's see an example. First example, k path. Okay, so in the, in, the, in the parameterized maximization version of k-path, uh, what, we, what, what we want to test is, is there a, uh, if there is a k-path of, if there is a path of length at least k, 
then we should be able to output a path of length at least k by alpha. This is what the uh, optimization version of the problem, uh, our objective is. Okay. So creating gap in this construction seems to be difficult, right? Like I, I want to take out, uh, I, I want to start with some instances of NP hard problem and want to create some, an instance of a uh, K path where there is a gap, like either the optimum is large or the optimum is too small. But the tricky part here is we can start with some NP hard problem where already some gap exists. Input comes with some promise where I, uh, such that either the uh, path length is too large or too small. For example, such a problem is alpha gap long path. It is a promise problem where it is given that either it has a Hamiltonian path or the, 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 the maximum length of a path is less than n by alpha. And even this version of the problem is NP hard. Now what we can do is we can take t instances of this problem alpha gap k path and where it comes with the two numbers large and small such that alpha times small is less than large. The, and the promise given is either <coughs> these instances have like a Hamiltonian path or a path of more than length more than L or the, or the longest path in it is less than small. So then what we can do is we can just take the disjoint union of all these graphs and then set K to be this large value large. Now if this graph has a path of length more than large then definitely one of them will have it. And if all of them will have, all of them has the, the maximum length of the path in all of these graphs is at most small, then definitely the maximum length of a path in this graph is less than small. And hence we get uh, this theorem that we cannot get a polynomial alpha approximate kernel for uh, k path. Now let's move on to the next question, dominating set, okay? Here we are given a graph G and a, an integer K, we all know that, is there a dominating set of size? So in the optimization version, the question we ask is output a dominating set, a minimum size dominating set in the parameterized setting if its size is at most K, okay? Clearly, uh, okay, and this problem has a log n factor approximation algorithm and no better uh, factor is known. And the problem is W too hard, but that won't prevent us from uh, looking for a uh, approximate kernelization. Because in the last talk you have seen a W one hard problem, which is partial vertex cover, and that has a polynomial sized kernel, approximate kernel, and so W2 hard problem could have a kernel and does it have constant factor approximate kernel of polynomial size? What is your guess? Since the talk is about lossy, uh, lower bound, you can assume that it does not have, but the question is how do you argue it? Do you see a cross composition? Yeah, uh, do you see something very cute? No, you cannot say. Just dominating set, W2 hard problem. Partial vertex cover was W1 hard problem. It had a kernel, a approximate kernel. It is a W2, famous W2 hard problem. You know the answer from maybe last talk. No answer. It does not have an FPT approximation algorithm. And then use this proposition. This proposition, you have seen it, right? 
at least one direction. An FPT alpha approximation algorithm exists if and only if it has an alpha approximate kernel of some size, not even polynomial. So by using this, it does not have like this, this is a well-known result we know. So, so before starting to prove this composition, uh, cross composition or alpha gap cross composition, let's do some sanity check like whether already somebody proved is there a lower bound on FPT approximation. And if yes, don't go to it. Okay. Now we move on to the main example of this talk which is set cover parameterized by n, where n is the universe size. So the input is a universe and a collection of sets is given and we want to find few number of sets such that their union is the universe. There is a symbol greedy, the symbol greedy algorithm will give you log n factor approximation and you cannot even get 1 minus epsilon log n factor approximation in polynomial time unless p is equal to np and I can just remove if there is a set, if there are two sets which are identical, right? It covers the same set of elements. So then the number of sets is 2 to the n. So there is an FPT algorithm parameterized by n, okay? And does it have a standard polynomial kernel? No, it is proved by Dom, Daniel and Saket does not have a polynomial kernel unless uh, np is a subset of coin p by poly. And so, so the instance look like this. Okay? So we have a small universe, universe u and a large collection of sets. And the question we are asking is by if I am ready to lose some factor, say some factor 10, then can we reduce this size of this large family to polynomial in n? So this could be 2 to the n for like or 2 to the square root n for example. Okay. So if I want to uh, like if I am ready to choose a 2 factor or 10 factor, can we get polynomial in n many sets here? This is the question we are asking. And so for any alpha, does set cover parameterized by n has a alpha approximate kernel, where alpha is a constant. And what we prove is it cannot have such a kernel. And we do cross composition. Okay? So what we need to do cross composition? We need to start from an NP hard problem, some NP hard problem, and we, we have to take some T instances of it, and we can use polynomial in the input length. Input length means this much time. It can be Conon deterministic, forget about that for the time being. And then we want to output an instance of this form. This blue part can be so large, they are the sets, and the universe supposed to be small. Uh, like polynomial in max of xi plus log t and, and along with that we also should output two numbers small and large such that alpha times small should be less than large and these two properties should hold. If at least one of the instance in the input instance is a yes instance then the optimum value should be less than small here it is a minimization problem. Otherwise, if all of them are no instances of L, then we want optimum to be more than large. Right? This is what we want. So, what is a good candidate solution for, a good candidate problem for L? Like, if you are doing for set cover, then maybe it is better to take set cover itself as the 
candidate solution. So, in fact, like the case of k path, there is also something known about uh, uh, some gap version of the set cover is known to be NP hard, which is called alpha gap set cover. So, this is a promise problem where the input instance is an instance of set cover. And along with this instance, we are also given two numbers, two integers, small and large, such that alpha times small is less than large. And it has the, it, the promise is given, all the instances we are given has the following property. Either it has a set cover of size less than small or any set cover has size more than large. So there is no set cover of size in between. So this promise is given. Okay? And so we just want to identify whether which category it belongs to, whether the optimum of u of f, u comma f is less than small or larger than, uh, more than large. Okay? And, and in fact, a, a more restricted version is also shown to be NP hard, which is like all the sets are having size at most d. This is also known to be NP hard and where this, this, this d is a constant depending only on alpha. So this is a good candidate for, uh, for making alpha gap cross composition for set cover. So in this, in this problem, every set has size at most d, where d is a constant depending on alpha and we are also given some promise. Either the set cover size is less than small or the set cover size is greater than large and these two numbers are far apart. So this is a good candidate to start for cross composition and this problem is NP hard. Okay. So the, one of the natural idea is like, okay, now I, I write set cover like a graph like this. So there will be vertices for sets and vertices for elements and add an edge between them if that element belongs to the set. Okay? And in our problem we notice that sets has size at most d which depends on alpha, alpha is a constant which means that degree is at most d. Okay? And the question we are asking is can we find a few vertices from here which dominate this part. Right? It's a variant of dominating set in that sense. Okay? So, we have t instances and we want a cross composition and I can assume that all the ui's have same size n, all the fi has same size m and the value of small and large, these two numbers given for all these instances are same. This I can assume like I am not going into the details but this we can assume. Okay? Now one of the natural method is take an arbitrary bijection between the universes and then create a, an instance like this. Okay? Now if you do like that, then any instance, suppose one of them was a yes instance. Suppose there is a small set of vertices here which dominate here. So how I did not get this construction? So how have you made this that just you have taken? So all these vertices like u, u, cardinality of u1 is same as cardinality of u2. Yes cardinality of u3, they are same and these elements u number 1, 2, 3 up to n. Yes. Okay? Now if one, 1 is adjacent to the first, then here also 1 is adjacent to the first here. Okay. Okay? And if here in the teeth instance 1 is adjacent to the uh, fourth one, fifth one, then 1 is also adjacent to the fifth one. Okay? Okay. okay? Just merge all these identify all these universes into element by element by element now if the one of the one of the input instance was a yes instance which means that suppose there is a small size set cover which means that suppose one of the the first instance has a few elements which dominate all these guys then that few elements will dominate all these guys so the forward direction will go through easily, right? But the backward direction may not go through, right? Because I may pick some vertices from here, some vertices from here to cover it. And so I can pick from uh, sets from different 
instances and cover it. Okay. So the backward direction will not go through it. Okay. And now another idea is like, um, so in the standard kernelization lower bound proved by uh, Dom, Daniel and Saket for the set cover parameterized by n in the standard kernel lower bound. What they did is like they added few elements here. This few elements is polynomial in log t and that prevents you, uh, you from picking like from different sets. And, but that trick only works in the standard kernelization setting but not in our approximate kernelization setting. Okay? So we need to have a new idea for it. Uh, for proving approximate kernel lower bound. Okay? So now I will explain how we can compose two instances and then we will extend that to composing into T instances. So start with two alpha gap D set cover instance. Okay? And then and this U1 has size n, U2 has size n, and then take a universe of size n square. Okay? And you map each the elements in the first column to the first element here, second column to the elements, uh, the second element here, like that. And for the first row to the first element here, second the elements in the second row, the second element here. Now in the new composite instance, the universe is what you see in yellow. Okay? And the sets are these blue. Okay? And this set contain the, ele the elements in this yellow portion contained in a set in blue uh, if there is a path of length at most 2. That means like oh, look at the, fir the, the, the first element. First element is contained in the first set. Right? Then all the elements in the first column is contained in the first set. Okay? Or in other words, if you are going to make the bipartite incidence graph of the large set cover instance, these corresponds to sets and this will be your new universe and there is an edge between a set here and an element here if the path is of length at most 2, like exactly 2. Okay? So replace each of the element by the corresponding elements here which is mapped to that particular element in the sets. Okay? Now clearly you take any set cover from here. Okay? If you take any set cover from here that covers this universe that will co the corresponding sets in the larger instance will cover everything. Yellow ones are the, that is the universe of the new instance. Mm -hmm. Now, what about those red ones? They, they are not there. This is to understand like how we are constructing the sets and universe. Uh, that's why the picture is written. So the this, the yellow portion is the universe, and the sets, the elements for the sets corresponds to the blue one, and this uh, this set contain all the elements in the first first column and if you look at this is in the fourth column okay and similarly so if you are going to write the bipartite incidence uh, graph or like bipartite adjacency graph of this set cover instance it looks like these are the elements corresponding to sets and these are the elements corresponding to the Uni uh, vertices corresponding to the universe, uh, elements in universe, and you have an edge between an element here and a set here if the path is of length 2. Right? So you pick any set cover, if there is a small set cover in one of the instance, say the first instance, then that will cover all the elements in U1. And, and those sets will cover all these elements in the universe. Right? So the forward direction is clear. Now suppose you take a, a, a bad set cover. What, what do I mean by bad set cover? Some sets here, some sets here, which covers like uh, this universe. 
in the sense it covers the first three and the last one here and the first four here which means that it is covering the universe right but then it will not cover this element like take the corresponding sets in the larger instance then it will not cover this okay so we can generalize this to t instances but then what is the size of this if i generalize this to t instances then it will have size u to the t and so the idea is we want to generalize this but we don't want to uh, you know blow up the size of u the yellow portion so what we want is we want a small universe which is not too large its size is like polynomial in log t and say one of these instance size and and we want for each of the element here i want to assign to one of the element here and construct a set accordingly then clearly any set cover here will also be a set cover for the new instance because you take a set cover here that will cover this universe this small universe and any element here has exactly one element like there is a map and then that particular set will be covering this particular element right and we also want to prevent bad solutions covering all the universe u what do i mean by bad solution if i pick some sets from the first and second and third and it covers like different elements of u i then it should not cover the entire u okay and so and the important part is u should not be too large we know how to make it when the size of u is n to the t right so here the magic is take u to be sufficiently large and do a random map okay then things will work out <coughs> i will explain it in a minute so our composite instance look like this okay we will have t instances and every instance comes with the same small and large value and the promise is given that every instance either have set cover of size at, at most small or its set cover size is so large okay i can easily assume that alpha times small is less than n because every set every instance has a set cover of size n so i can easily assume that okay now what we do is we take u to be sufficiently large that large number is somewhat like this this is log m t choose n where m is the number of sets okay and n to the 2d where d is a constant depending on alpha okay and then we will have a random map from u to u i for all i that means each element here will be mapped to a random randomly choose an element from u1 and map to here that is the that, that is the random map of the first random map okay call it f1 maybe okay and for the ft the tth random map take the take each element and randomly randomly map to one of the element in ut okay and now as like before the universe is this and sets are corresponding to these the, these vertices and and a set here contain some element here if that set contain an element here for which it is mapped to okay that means like take take every set and look at its element replace them with the elements in the yellow part which are mapped to that element okay so here the degree is d but after i construct this large instance the sets may have larger size because to one element i may be assigning many elements okay now 
as I said before, suppose one of the instances is a yes instance. If there is a small, like and, and we output small and large to be the same as what is in the previous, in the input instance, in the, in the, in the composite instance as well. And what we, what we can show is, if one of the input instance is a yes instance, which means that there is few number of vertices here which dominate all these vertices. And that particular element will dominate all these guys, right? Because it's a random map. Okay? So the forward direction is very clear. Okay, now the, the, uh, the hard part is the reverse direction. Okay? Now, suppose I prove the following. Suppose some of the, if there is some bad solution covers you. What do I mean by that? I pick some solution, some sets, which comes from something from here, something from here, and something from other instances, and that covers you. Then that is a bad case, right? Because we want like if and only if with respect to one of the instance, right? Okay. Then if I prove that this probability is less than one, then we could use Conon determinism. How do we use Conon determinism is like this map instead of being a randomized one, I say like I guess the random random map. This is a random map, right? Instead of being it is a randomized algorithm, it is a non-deterministic one which guesses this random map. Okay? No matter what random map it is, if one of the instances is a yes instance, then it is clearly an yes instance. Okay? Now, I know that this argument, there exists some random choices for which no bad solution will cover you. Which means that in that particular non-deterministic choice, even the bad solution cannot cover you. So, which means that there is no solution of size uh, at most alpha times small. Okay? Now, how to prove it? This is what we want to prove next. Okay? Fix some bad solution uh, S. Okay? You can part these sets, S1 comes from the first instance, S2 comes from the second instance, like these are the sets from the first instance, uh, S1 comes from the first instance, S2 comes from the second instance, like that, okay? And I, I just assume that all these sets are in the first L instances, okay, for simplicity. And then let Xi be the number of elements in Ui covered by the elements Si, okay? So Si is the sets in the first instance, uh, in the ith instance, okay? And then clearly Xi is less than n because it's a bad solution. Bad solution means like when I restrict to one, one, one of the instance, it should not cover entire thing. Now fix an element u in, the, in our large universe u and see what is the probability that u is not covered by s. Okay? It is the probability that u is not covered by all of the si's. Take the product of it. Right? And then I can write this as 1 minus what is the probability that u is covered by si. Okay? And clearly when does u is covered by si? U U is covering Xi elements in Ui. If this particular U in U is mapped to one of the element, one of the Xi elements in Ui, then Si will cover U. Which means that what is that probability Xi by N. Right? Now we can take two cases where Xi is more than N by 2 and Xi is less than N by 2. Now, what we can use is the number of Xi's for which Xi is more than n by 2 is at most 2D. Because this is S, okay, this is F1. F2 like that 
and here I have S1, S2 and these are the universes and here the degree is at most D because we started with alpha gap D set cover. So the, the total number of times elements covered is at most n times d. Okay? If, there are, if there are more than n by 2 number of, uh, more, if there are more than 2d number of xi's, uh, 2d number of xi values, which is 2d number of i's for which xi's are more than n by 2, then clearly the total number of times these elements covered is more than uh, n times d and that is not possible because its degree is at most d, right? Because of that we can write this quantity is at least 1 by n, 1 by n to the 2d and the other quantity we can bound like this, I don't go much into it, other quantity also we can bound like this and we get 1 by n to the 5d. Now, now ask the question what is the probability that S covers U? All the elements in U is covered by S okay? and which is actually this much and for at the, the value of U is at least uh, n to the 5d into log this value and this will be at most 1 by mt choose n and the number of bad solution is at most m t choose n. Bad, total number of sets is m into t. I can choose at most n of them, right? And total number of bad solution is at most. By union bound, some bad solution covers u is less than 1. And this complete the proof of that one. Now, yesterday, like somebody gave a open problem of directed Steiner tree right? uh, and the problem is we are given a directed graph and a root vertex and some set of terminals. We want an in tree of, okay, it is a edge arc weighted directed tree. We want an in tree of minimum weight, minimum cost containing R. So now I will show like we can use reductions to prove low secondal lower bound. For example, I, I can give a reduction from set cover parameterized by n to this problem. Here the parameter is like cardinality of the terminal set. So take a set cover instance and arrow like make u to be r and put arrow towards f and keep the edge weight 0 and then create a root vertex and everything you connect to that particular root vertex with weight 1. Now if we have a rooted tree with the minimum cost will go through like these are the edges that contribute to the cost and if we just contribute to the set covers like uh, for the um, what is the minimum weight of a root uh, in tree containing R will be exactly same as the set cover number because like I want to reach from here to here and it should go to one of the sets. What is the minimum set cover and these edges cost 0 and these edges cost 1. Right. So we can use reductions and cross composition to prove lossy kernel lower bound. So two techniques we have seen, one is cross composition and parameter preserving reduction and one of the important point to note is we just start with the gap version of the problem, okay? then it will be easier, right? then you don't have to create the gap but don't destroy the gap. And Conant determinism could be useful, you could use randomization technique and one of the open question is there is another version of cross composition 
so here we did the or version of the cross composition. There is something called and cross composition. And is there an equivalent notion of like alpha gap and cross composition here as well? We don't know and whether that will also be used. Hmm? What? I didn't get. So my question is like, can you prove like suppose somebody gave you like alpha gap cross composition, then can you prove lower bound? I don't know. I mean, it's not the example I'm talking about. Suppose like I say like L alpha gap and cross composes to some problem, then does, does it imply that the theorem like it does not have a alpha approximate kernel? Is that theorem true? Okay, now at the end I will give one example. You can think about a minute and see the, what is the low kernelization complexity. Oh, sorry, this is the one, okay? So you have seen connected vertex cover. Now it's a weighted connected vertex cover, okay? So what is the upper bound, what is the lower bound? If it has connected vertex cover of size at most k, then you should give one of the minimum weight. Otherwise, I don't care. Okay, fair. You can think about it, and that's what. Like, and 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 then anyone has the answer, you can tell the answer. Like. Yes, but you need to create that much gap. Yeah. It all depends on like how much gap we create. So, so I just wanted to make a remark about the arm, hmm. uh, the, the arm cross composition thing. Ah. Um, so, arm, okay, so gap creating arm cross compositions hmm. probably will out. Kernels under the same assumption, common P is not a subset of NP plus poly. Okay. But for that to be formally proved, what is required is a protocol version of Andy Drucker's proof of uh, and distillation. Okay. But, but, but it's just, it's, it's like a simplified, it's, it's, you don't need a, pro a general protocol version, it's a simplified one. So, it, so probably just going through this proof and observing that it works, works. Uh, but we're not 100% certain of this. Yep, okay. Anyone has the answer to connector vertex cover? <laughs> it has no polynomial kernel, like you can reduce from set cover like the previous reduction. Previous reduction. But it has exponential kernel. <laughs> 